Hey guys, welcome. Today we're going to be learning how to do uh, user forms in Excel and how to make them work using Visual Basic programming. We're going to be looking at two routes. The first one is just the user form that Excel already offers you if you have Office 2013 onwards. So you're not going to have to learn any programming and you can be done in five minutes. Or the second more complicated route is do your own user form. We're going to customize it. We're going to add drop down lists and everything that you want. And yes, of course, it's going to require programming. It's not complicated programming, but it is going to re require you to delve into the netherworld that is Visual Basic. All right, guys. Now, a word of warning. A lot of people want to learn to do user forms with Excel because they want to create their own systems, their own enterprise resource planning systems or their own inventory systems, uh, customer relationship management, stuff like that. Guys, uh, Excel is not for that, all right? Excel is not a proper data storage solu solution. It's useful for analysis, it's excellent for calculations and pretty much a ton of stuff. But whenever you want to try to do a complete system for your company using Excel, you're going to end in tears, all right? That's going to end in tragedy. So guys, make sure that you use user forms sparingly. Uh, they're really popular, they make you stand out in your company, but don't abuse them, all right? There's a lot of mistakes built into user forms and there's a lot of reasons why they shouldn't be used. However, with that word warning, warning said, let's get started. All right, guys, so now let's get started. We're going to be doing the user forms right now. Remember, just because you can doesn't mean that you should. Um, it's really dangerous to use Excel as an enterprise resource planning and using user forms is usually just asking for trouble. I will not tire of repeating that throughout the video. All right, guys, so with that disclaimer said, let's get started. We have right here a small table where we have five fields, name, last name, mail, course date, and status. And we have just one, uh, one record here, all right, which is me. And uh, supposedly I signed up for a course in the 5th of January of 2019. All right, so for those of you guys that don't want to bother with programming at all, then there's a solution for you. And that's what we're going to get started with. The first thing that you have to do is that you have to make sure that, oh, not you. Yes, I want to exit the wizard. You have to make sure that you select one single item within this table, just one item. And we're going to go over here to insert table, all right? Make sure that you have a table. So insert table and make sure that the table has headers. Okay, so now you've converted your table to an actual Excel table. I have an entire video on that and we cover that very in depth in the online course, but um, just make sure that you converted your range to an Excel table. It's going to be really useful for creating your user form without programming. Now, here's the interesting part. You'll go over here to file and then over to options. And once you're inside in this options menu, go over to quick access toolbar. Quick access toolbar is this one up on top. And we're going to add one extra uh, button that's called the forms button. So look for all commands and um, now scroll all the way down to the letter F. All right. Once you're here in the letter F, you're going to look for form. All right. Select form, add it here and press OK. All right, guys, there we go. Now let's get started. Notice how we got this little extra button right here that's called form. As long as you're selecting any part of the table and you click here on form, you are going to get a form for your new table. All right. So let's suppose I wanted to add a new record here. I'm going to press new and it's going to ask me for all of my data. So I'm going to start typing in name. Um, say the new student is going to be called Aragorn, son of Arathorn. At a thorn, uh, his mail is going to be king at gondor.com. The course date is going to be 0501 2019. And the status is going to be down payment only. All right, as soon as I click new, notice how I'm going to get an extra line right here with my new record. All right, guys. Now, that's pretty much the, the really interesting part here because Without any programming at all, I already have a user form here. Now, I do not have the option of customizing that this user form, all right? So I know you'd like it for course date for status where we have this, this options here. For us to have a dropdown list here that where we could be able to choose any course or any status, well, we don't. We have to type it in by hand like some kind of savage, 2303-2019. And you're subject to a fact that if you type it down wrong, then Excel isn't going to care. It's going to show up wrong right here where it says course date. All right, guys. So that's one disadvantage there. The advantage is, of course, you don't have to do any programming. 
and you can delete records, all right? So say, for example, I don't like the, the Aragorn Turn Fathom record, I can go click here, delete, and it's going to tell me that the displayed record will be permanently deleted. Okay, and bam, you're gone, okay? You're gone, and uh, there's no way to bring that, bring that back. All right, I'm going to close this form right now. Um, if you're not interested in programming, this is it for you. I mean, the video is over because it's pretty much the only thing that you can do with Excel forms. The only way you can add new fields is by adding them to the table. Now, guys, let's go check out how you would go about doing a, a user form the old fashioned way using our developer tab. So to make sure that you have the developer tab open because not everyone does, go over here to file, go over here to options, and then click on Customize Ribbon. And over here, you're going to find Developer. It's an option right here, and you may or may not have it checked, all right? Um, some cases in Excel, I, I've, I don't know if in English it's the case, but some tabs are called Developer and some are, are called Programmer. They're the exact same thing, all right? So whether it's Developer or Programmer, make sure that you have the little checkbox here. Let's press OK and let's go on. All right, guys, now we have our developer tab. Let's go over here to this button that says Visual Basic and notice how you get Visual Basic open. It's empty right now because we haven't added anything. So let's go over here to where it says Insert and search for something that's called User Form, all right? There we go. All right, this User Form thingy is uh, pretty much what we're going to be working with. We're going to assign something similar to what we just used doing, I mean, to this little form, but we're going to make I'll add a bunch of stuff that we are going to find really useful, all right? So the first thing, notice that I can click right here and make my user form larger or smaller, all right? So I'm going to leave it at that, a big, nice rectangular form, and I'm going to start adding elements to it. So the first element I want here is this thing, uh, this little label thing, and uh, well, as its name says, it's going to be just a label and it's going to tell us what we're going to be typing in, all right? So notice how I clicked on the user form, dragged it out, and it pretty much just drew a label. Now, when it comes to elements in the user form, we have two things that are important, name and caption, all right? Now, the name is how we refer to that element during the programming stage, but the caption is what is actually shown to the user, all right? So these two can be really different. I'm not going to bother with the name of the labels because labels are never referred to, almost never referred to in programming, but the caption is really important in the label because, well, you want it to label something and it can be called label one. So I'm going to call it name, all right? And as you might be guessing, I'm going to be creating a label for pretty much each and every single one of my, uh, of my five uh, fields, all right? In order to create new labels, I can do it by hand or I can select my label, press Ctrl C and Ctrl V, all right? Copy and paste. I am going to start laying them out here. I'm not going to bother much with uh, whether they're correctly spaced or not. Just lay them down. All right, now, the second label, instead of being name, should be called last name. And of course, it's not going to fit. So let's make it a little bit larger. All right. This one, instead of being called name, should be mail. This one should be course date. It's not going to fit, so let's make it a little bit larger. And finally, this one is called name. It's going to be called status right okay guys so now this is our form it only has labels it's pretty useless right now but now we're going to be adding something called a text box now this is the part where you actually type in stuff all right so click here where it says text box and start drawing up name all right one besides name now this text box notice how it doesn't have any caption right here right it doesn't have any any caption but it does have a name and in this instance, since I am going to be referring to this text box during my programming, it's going to be useful to know what it's going to be called. So it's going to be called name, all right? Now I'm going to insert two more. Select this text box, copy it with Ctrl C, paste it with Ctrl V, and drag it out to its correct location. Same thing for my third text box, and there we go. Now this second text box is going to be called last name, and this third text box is going to be called mail. All right, guys. Now, uh, with that done, now we're going to be doing for the course date and the status. Remember that we're limited to these options, all right? So in order to actually do that correctly, we're not going to be using text boxes. We're going to be using something called a combo box, which is pretty much a fancy name for drop down list, all right? So select your combo box and uh, draw one right here and copy and paste it and draw another one right here. Works pretty much the exact same way as this one's. 
we're going to change the names in order to course date. And this one is going to be called status. All right, there we go. All right, two more elements we have to add, which are going to be buttons. Or your buttons are this one right here. They're called command buttons, actually. So the first one is going to be drawn right here, and it has a name and a caption. Uh, in this instance, because we're going to be referring to a command button both in programming and we needed to read something useful, we're going to be changing both the name and the caption. So this is going to be, going to be called new record and the caption is going to be called new record all right now guys notice one thing i've probably forgot to mention is that when it comes to captions you can type in anything that you want but when it comes to names you have to make sure that you respect the fact that no spaces are allowed right no spaces at all so uh i'm going to to create a new button right here copy and paste and this second command button is going to be called exit all right, not a legal name because that's probably a reserved word. All right, um, close, exit, all right. And the caption is actually going to be exit. All right, guys, there we go. We have our little user form. And most importantly, we have a lot of real estate that we don't need. So let's make it a little bit smaller. All right, guys, there we go. Now, with our user form done, we are going to get started with uh, the programming, all right, the programming. But before we do the programming, I just wanted to have a look at it. In order for you to test your user form from, from here, from the developer uh, window, just select your user form and go over here and click on the green run button. All right, click on it and we'll get a user form. Now, it doesn't do anything. All right, doesn't matter if I type in all of my data. Notice how it doesn't do anything. The lists do not work and uh, it's pretty much useless. All right, why? Because I haven't programmed anything at all. All right. So we're going to have to do this in three steps. The first one is going to be, we're going to make sure that the lists work. Second step, we're going to make sure that the exit button works. And the third step is going to be the meat of it all. We're going to make sure that the new record button works. All right, so lists, exit, new record. So let's get started. How would we go about doing that? Well, go ahead and right click on any part of the gray area in your user form and click on view code. Now I have a bunch of students that for God knows what reason, they go and click right here, or right here. No, I said gray area, all right? You have a ton of gray area. It's more likely, I mean, you could do it blind and it's more likely that you'll get gray area. So right click, view code. All right, guys. So um, you don't need to know a lot of macro. I mean, you don't need to know Visual Basic in order to start programming. Of course, it's going to help, but uh, a quick primer for those of you that are new. Right here, we have the object uh, menu and the uh, method menu, all right? So the object in this instance is going to be my user form. That's fine. I want to create a uh, code that applies to my user form. However, the method right now that we're selecting is click. That means that whatever code I write is going to, to be executed on click. That's not what I want. I want the code to be executed as soon as the form initializes. So I just go select here and select initialize and notice how it created a new area for me. All right, user form initialize. So that's what I want. Okay, so let's type in the code between the, the area that says private sub and nsub. All right, that means private sub, it's a private subroutine and then sub, it means that that subroutine ends. And the subroutine, as we said before, is going to be for filling in the lists. Let me drag this down here to the left and show you where the lists are, all right? So if you remember, our lists were called course date and status, all right? So let's go back to our code area and that's what we're going to be filling in. Course date dot list is going to be equals to, my worksheet is called table, so worksheet table dot range, um, N8 to N12, excellent. N8 to N12, dot value. All right, guys? So let's explain this little line of code. Course date dot, dot list is referring to the combo box that's called course date, the list inside the combo box, all right? So I'm telling it, go grab the combo box and within that combo box, grab the list. And that list, I'm sorry, and that list is going to be equals to worksheet table 
So it's going to be this worksheet over here. The range N8 to N12, this range in particular. That's it, all right? The values inside the range. Now, I'm going to copy this line and paste it right here and change it for, you guessed it, my status combo box, all right? Right click and view code. So instead of course date, this is now going to be called status. And the worksheet is fine, but the range is not. The range is now going to be everything from 08 to 010. Make sure that type, you type it in correctly or it's going to show a mistake when you're filling in your list, all right? The most common mistake that I see my students make is uh, typos, typos when programming. All right, guys, now let's go back to our user form. We're going to press play and it's still going to be useless. Uh, oh, sorry, guys, I failed you. It's not worksheets. It's work. It's not worksheet, it's worksheets, all right? Speaking of typos, yeah, that's the most common mistake. So let's go back to a user form, press play, and there we go. As I said, it's still going to be useless. The buttons are not going to be working, but you're going to have your lists ready, all right? So notice how my lists now limit me, limit me to actually selecting something from there, all right, guys? So that's a win. That's a win, but still we need to get the buttons to work. I'm going to close my form right now. And I'm going to explain why we're starting with the exit button. Mostly because this is uh, this is just good programming practice. Whenever I see people working with Visual Basic, they create their new record button and it's an awesome program. And then they go ahead and create like search functions and print and uh, whatever you want. I mean, they, they create all of these awesome programs. And then they absolutely forget about the humble exit button, all right? Because it's so simple. So that's why we start with exit. Make sure that we don't forget it. All right, guys, so double click just on the exit button and it's going to take us to uh, this piece of code over here. Now, it's going to tell us that we're in the button that's called close exit. Remember that that's the name we put to button, we apply to button, and the method is going to be click. So this code is going to be executed whenever we click the close exit button. All right, guys, so that's fine for me. That's what we want to do with buttons, click them, click on them. So uh, I'm going to write in, pay attention, this is going to be really complicated load me all right that's it that's your entire code for for closing the um uh, for closing the form whenever whenever you get to advanced i mean if you're working with advanced forms you this is not this isn't going to be enough but right now that we're beginners unload me is good enough all right guys so let's go back to a user form let's press play and we have our lists going on because they remember they get set up upon the initial initialization of my user form and then we have our exit button. It closes the form, all right, guys? So that's it. Now let's get to the meat of the program, which is my new record button, all right? This is going to be a really, really important button. I'm going to double click on this new record button. And this is where we're going to be typing in everything, all right, guys? So, uh, no, I didn't want you to do that. Move to the right, yes. Thanks for paying attention. All right, guys, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to sort of jury rig this thing over here in order to make sure that it doesn't overwrite the last record, all right? How would I go about doing that? Well, it's simple. Uh, the way my teachers taught me, just insert a new line and then start typing in in that new line, all right? So that's what we're going to be doing right now, inserting a new line in range A16. It's going to be really simple. I'm going to tell it to go to worksheets, table, within the range A16, because that's where the, where the new line is coming. And then I'm going to tell it entire row dot insert. All right, let's test it out. I'm going to press play. I'm going to press new record. And yeah, you see, we get the new line right here. All right, press exit. And now that we have the new line there, I'm going to delete it because uh, that was just a test. Now that we have the new line, I am going to do the, I'm going to grab everything from that I supposedly typed into my user form and put it into a new line. It's so much simpler than you think, all right? Pretty much we have to remember how the text boxes were, were named. So this first text box was called name, all right? So uh, let's go over to new record and I'm going to tell it the following. I'm going to tell it that range A16, which is the place where I would type in the name right here, is going to be equals to um, name dot uh, value, all right? And that's it. 
Now, I'm going to repeat this process four more times for each one of my elements. However, I'm going to copy this line and paste it four more times. So I have five lines in general, and then I'm just going to change the coordinates and the object, right? So it's A16, the next one is in B16, the next one is in C16, then D16, and then E16, all right? Most common mistakes I see my students make, they don't reason what, what it is that they're doing, and they change the number instead of the column, all right? Remember that we're typing stuff out and to the right, that means we're changing columns. Now, name, this one is going to be called last name, this one is going to be called mail, this one is going to be called uh, course date, and this one is going to be called, mm, <laughs> what was it, status. All right, so let's press play, and let's start typing in uh, our data. So this one is going to be called or bag, the orc, this is his mail is orbag at mordor.com. Course date is going to be the 2nd of February and company pays, all right? So saw don't pay for him. Let's do a new record, guys. And, oh, I found a qualifier. We get the invalid qualifier mistake because silly me, uh, we can't call this text box name because it's a reserve word, but Visual Basic didn't let us know. So let's change the name of the text box to something like names, all right? And let's change our code right here to something called name. All right, guys? I'm sorry, to something called names, uh, which is pretty much the exact same thing I did over there. So the text box has to be called names and the code over here has to be referring to names. And now when we run it, let's start again, or bag, the orc uh, or bag at mordor.com hey, you. Uh, full payment new record notice how I get my record right out here right no mistakes however there's one last part that we need to do I mean the form is already functional but say for example if I want to type in new stuff I'd need to manually go ahead and delete everything else and type in my new record all right so that's not going to work but correcting that is really, really simple. Let's go over here to our user form, right click here and click view code. And I'm going to tell it to use the following names equals empty. All right. So that there I'm telling, I'm telling Visual Basic to go ahead, select the text box and empty it. All right. Empty it of any value. So let's get back to our code names equals empty, I'm going to copy this line of code and paste it four times, all right? And apply it to each one. So last name equals empty, mail equals empty, course date equals empty, and status equals empty, all right, guys? So I'm going to press, oh, one last thing that I could do that it's going to make my life a lot easier is the following names dot set focus all right that means that my mouse cursor is going to start blinking in the names text box and it's going to be ready for me to start typing all right guys so let's try it again uh let's do gimli this time all right gimli son of loin the mail is going to be gimli at lonely mountain dot gob and oh, that gov uh, the course date is going to be this one and the status is going to be down payment only. So notice what happens when I click new record, everything is erased, Gimli shows up here and my mouse cursor is already blinking in my name text box. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it. Now I have my user form up and running. I can click exit. Two more things that we have to take care of this. Well, one is aesthetic and the other one is actually functional. Our user form right now has caption user form one, all right? So I can go ahead, select my user form, look for the caption button, the caption property, I'm sorry, and change it to caption, oh no, I'm sorry, uh, data capture, say for example. Data capture, all right? There we go, now it says data capture. 
Now, second one, most importantly, this one is actually really functional, is the fact that we cannot expect to deliver uh, this Excel worksheet to somebody and expect them to actually know how to go to developer, visual basic, uh, and uh, then open the user form and press play. All right, that's asking way too much out of people. Now, what we're actually going to be doing is adding a button right here that's going to allow us to open up our user form. All right, so I'm going to go over here to the developer, check out this briefcase and click on it and I'm going to get form controls and active X controls. I'm going to go over here where it says form controls and select this button over here, which represents a button, all right? A command button. Press on it and draw it right here in Excel, all right? Now it's going to ask me to assign a macro. I don't have a macro to assign to it yet. So I'm going to tell it to go ahead and assign a new macro. All right, guys? And this macro is going to be two lines, all right? Two lines. The first line is going to be uh, about loading the user form. So load user form one. The second macro is going, the second line is going to be asking us to show us that user, that user form. User form one dot show. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it. Now, last but not least, let's change the name from this, but the caption of this button from bottom one to create new record. All right, guys. So let's click on here and it's going to open up my data capture form. I'm going to capture something. I'm not going to make up characters of my own imagination now. I'm just going to type in whatever, create new record, and there we go. There's my new record. All right, guys? As soon as I'm finished, I press exit, and we are done. All right, guys, that's the easy way, the simple way for you to start using user forms in Excel. Uh, notice how there's not, there isn't much in the way of complicated programming. It's just... Uh, knowing how to refer to the objects and the boxes and everything. Once you want to do more complicated stuff, like, uh, I don't know, conditional searches or loops and stuff like that, that's when it gets complicated with Visual Basic. But this, this is really simple. However, guys, again, remember, word of warning, don't go creating user forms for everything in Excel. Just because you can doesn't mean that you should. User forms are, are are fickle, right? They are going to let you down. They're going to give you missing records. They're going to probably delete your data. They're going to overwrite your data. And um, you have to make them foolproof because if your user is an idiot, it's a fool, <laughs> well, uh, they're going to mess up your user, user form. Uh, there's a ton of reasons why I don't like them. But if you are a small business and you're considering getting a, an ERP for your company, something that manages inventories or customers or something, do yourself a favor and uh, get some subscription software from the internet. All right, guys, you, you don't want to be doing messing around with that in Excel. Excel is an analysis tool, a calculation tool, but not a data storage tool. All right, guys. Well, that's it. With that, we are done. I hope that you enjoyed the video and um, I'll see you in the next one. Do you want to be an Excel god? Our online course will turn you into an Excel master in only 90 days. Excel is the most important tool in the office, but almost nobody knows how to use it. Most people dive right into Excel with no formal training and never use the right tools. And thus, they end up delivering mess reports that are full of mistakes and they end up hating their jobs. In reality, Excel is really simple to use and can do your job for you, if you know how to use it. But you have to pick the right place to learn from or you'll only end up more confused with all of the different tools and functions that Excel has to offer. So, what can you do? Our Excel course is tailor-made for you. We're going to teach you Excel, all of Excel, using real-life examples. From simple exercises to full-fledged business case studies. Take the online course and you'll be an Excel god in only 90 days. The course consists in more than 45 lessons and 15 case studies, all with their detailed solutions completely recorded in video and you're going to be able to access them whenever you want, whatever you want. Best of all, you're going to have lifetime access to the course and you're going to get any of the updates that we're constantly putting out for free. Even better, when you get our course, you'll have free access to our full Visual Basic and Macros course and also to our Power BI course, all with just one single purchase. More than 3,000 students have passed through our classrooms. We've attended companies like Kodak, IBM, Samex, HP, Continental, DB Schenker, and more. So, if you want to absolutely master Excel, make sure that you sign up now. You will become an Excel guy. A2 Excel.